Office to you all. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Drama Time on a Friday, which is strange because it follows like a week of playing World of Warcraft. My God. Investigating Season of Discovery and on day five of Season of Discovery. Holy cow, did it turn up in its actual glory. Yes, it did. It turned up in special way. We were collecting runes, we're level caps, we got our mounts, and we were off to... Are we saying Gnome Regan? Gnome Merrigan? Gnome Regan? I don't know. One of them. <laughs> we're saying one of them. That's for damn sure. That's for damn sure. We're saying one of those things. But what a fun raid. So much better than BFD. Uh, absolutely enjoyed the hell out of it. Very mechanically uh, puzzle solving bosses, which was awesome. Got to look at some mechanics and figure it out. And the spark in me from my World of Warcraft uh, longevity uh, was risen once again. Risen once again. And uh, it was really fun. It was super, super fun. Not finished it yet. We just we killed the second to last boss. As the last boss spawned, it was time to bestow some drama antics upon all of you. But enough about my week. Let's have some fun. And I'd stick around to the end because there's a little surprise coming. Yay. Uh, that I would really like to talk about. Uh, which is great. So, uh, if you're new to Drama Time and you've been like, what is this guy doing? What is this? Drama Time is, there are, every single one of you listening right now and every single one of these wonderful people uh, who are joining us right here live at 4 p.m. on a Friday afternoon uh, has dealt with people online. And online people, for the most part, just much like real life, are fine and great and wonderful and superb. We meet people every day who are great. The guy in the shop wants to talk to you, say hi, they open the door for you. But then there's those people. You know who I mean. Those one or two people who are just the absolute worst of the worst. Uh, and serve as both entertainment and a warning to people who may be ending up in those situations that they just don't recognize the red flags. Because I didn't. This show started with my drama stories that have happened in my life of online gaming. But needless to say, every single one of you has a story to tell. And you can share that with us at drama at preachgaming.com. Just send in an email or submit it on our website, whichever one you prefer. Uh, and we can enjoy it all together. Uh, so we're going to do that right now. So stick around for some tales of woe, misery, uh, and fun. Uh, there is one here. I've got several stories in front of me. Um... But one of them is referencing Season of Discovery. So I assume it's quite recent. Uh, so let's see what happens here. Because it says, Season of Discovery with my chicken shit friends. <laughs> I don't know what you could be afraid of in Season of Discovery. It's just WoW Classic. But then again, OK Mage died to a pig six times when she tried Classic and quit. Because apparently, compared to retail, Classic is real shit. Classic is where the real nightmares exist. That's where the pain and misery is. Like, retail is for the softies. What you want to do is get into Classic, where you get your ass kicked. Uh, so it should be good. I would give a lot of money for her to play hardcore. Maybe we can tempt her in. <laughs> Wonder wonderful, wonderful. Okay. <clears throat> Let's begin our tales for this Friday, the 16th of February. My wonderful, wonderful audience. Jo oh, okay. <laughs> I just read the first line. Ladies and gentlemen of the live audience, I'm sorry to those of you listening elsewhere who can't do this, but raise your gavels high. Raise your gavels high. Because once again, somebody has come to the court of drama time to be judged. Justice preach. And the insightful, wonderful, sweet-smelling jury. Again, as a reminder, we do not have an innocent emote. <laughs> As you can well see. Will you please hear my case? A judgment is required. Okay. Friends, countrymen, members of the jury. Okay. I play Season of Discovery on a Rep Paladin. Guilty. <laughs> yes. Yes, I play a male human Rep Paladin guilty but that i know i'm guilty of and it is not why i seek the judgment of the courts okay i am an officer wait we have officers and shit in season of discovery okay i am an officer of a mid-sized pretty decent guild called live audience what is the name of our friends season of discovery guild 
We need a classic name, ideally a little bit of Latin thrown in, something involving the dark horses of Camelot riding across, uh, something like that. Uh, the, the guilties, the runeless and poor. I like it, yes. The runeless and poor, which I am now. I have seven gold to my name. <laughs> the cooks. Thanks, Jack. Uh, I am in a pretty decent guild called the runeless and poor. But it has a long history, oh, it's one of these, with various versions of the Runeless and Poor existing in the game. Some of the members of the Runeless and Poor have been around for 10 years. One of those old heads is a rogue, of course it's a rogue, named Raven. Raven signed the guild charter. He was OG as OG comes. He was an officer at one point. And that didn't work out. Interesting. Why, might you wonder, would somebody who was there at the prestigious foundations of the runeless and poor be demoted from his prestigious officer position? Well, Raven is pathologically an arsehole. <laughs> I do not use the term pathologically lightly. It's relentless. It never stops. He is a constant pain in the ass he is one of the most annoying people i have ever met in my entire life raven spams a lot guild chat with requests for help to do very obviously soloable quests if he joins discord for voice comms he goes on these endless endless tales and pointless stories about oh no what he saw on Facebook that day. I mean, I hate you already. I <laughs> Not only do you have a Facebook account that you actively check in 2024, which is fucking bizarre at this point, uh, but uh, you're also regurgitating it to those people who don't check Facebook every single day. I'm only saying that because I'm, of course, awesome and don't use Facebook because I'm really cool and it's not because I can't be fucking bothered. Um, if you ever start a group for a Dead Mines or a Shadow Fan Keep or anything at all, immediately he will ask, is there any rogue loot in there? Even if he asked about the same dungeon the day before, the day before, the day before, and the day before. As a result of this, it has become guild policy to not type in guild chat when he comes online and head to private discords. In That's insane. That's actually insane. You've all like learned like dogs with like treats that <laughs> if he logs on, you just shut the fuck up and don't say anything. Right? Just kick him. This guy's clearly poisoned, but he's old school. Can you kick somebody who's been in the guild for that long? Can you kick somebody who was there for the signing of the guild charter? Can you do it? Can you be that guy? I can be that guy. I, I don't give a fuck. Fuck you. <laughs> I'm out. Anyway. <sighs> he cottoned on to this when people stopped replying to him. So he started finding the discords. When Raven joins a discord channel, people suddenly have to go to bed. It got so bad that we started setting up multiple discords to keep moving after we said we'd gone to bed. In guild chat, we would excuse this by saying, I just have one more thing to do. This is just unbelievable. <laughs> this is like, outrageous. You just have like avoid Raven 1, avoid Raven 2, avoid Raven 3. <laughs> like just keep moving through them. And then Raven's joining the avoid Raven. <clears throat> I didn't know this in the early days. Mike and Jury, I once made the mistake of inviting Raven to my Scarlet Monastery group. Despite being level 35, he had to run there from Menethil Harbour because he had never gotten the South Shore flight point. Uh, oh, and you are Alliance as well. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> On the way, he got lost. The group watched him do laps around Dalaran. Little nods to the old uh, Alex there. 
We then saw him die drowning in the lake while he was talking to us about Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> None of us, of course, dared to offer any advice because he didn't want to enter into more conversation with him. By the time Raven arrived, we had cleared library, armory, and cathedral twice and then left alone because it was time for us to go and eat. However... <sighs> It kind of sounds like he's the guild mascot a little bit, doesn't it? Doesn't it sound like he's kind of the guild mascot? Just a little bit. I've played with people like this. They're kind of funny to have around. <laughs> because you just can't make it up what they get into. Some people just get themselves into situations that are just... In, like, they're so bizarre. That you're like, I kind of don't want to kick you because I don't know what you're going to do next. <laughs> but I say this to you. As you may already be swinging your guilty hammer. What Raven lacks in wits and charisma and charm, he more than makes up for for his World of Warcraft enthusiasm. That's even more annoying. According to legend, <laughs> according to legend, Raven has been playing World of Warcraft every day pretty much since 2014. <laughs> Pussy. Those are rookie numbers. 2014. What a loser. In our ire... Oh, no. <sighs> okay, this is a warning to everybody listening to this out there. What you're about to hear is about to make you cringe so much your shoe's going to explode. So I recommend if any of you are currently wearing footwear is that you remove it, okay? Because your toes are about to break. <clears throat> In our IRL picture thread, Raven posted his latest acquisition. On his left shoulder... He had tattooed for the Alliance across the shoulder blade. On his right shoulder blade, he had tattooed the words for the Horde. Oh, how sweet. <laughs> you know what really bothers me, though? He might be listening because there aren't many other people who have that. <coughs> this is... <laughs> This is a bit of an identifier as to who the person might be. I don't think we're going to get away with anonymity on this one, if I'm being honest with you. That one's uh, that one's kind of specific. <laughs> he names his... Oh. He has two dogs. One named Brian Forge. I feel I could taste the vomit. The other dog is named Ruins of Lordaeron. Which he calls Lordaeron for short. We asked him why he would name it that, and he says it sounds so cool when I'm in the dog park saying, Come here, Ruins of Lordaeron. I'm calling Ruins of Lordaeron a good boy. You're alone in that park, aren't you? It's not cool. It's not. It's not cool. It's, oh, stop saying king shit. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> king shit. <laughs> now, I am what you might call or describe in the audience as a sweat. I am a sweaty player. Phase two launched on Friday morning and I was 40 by Saturday night. Same. I dinged in SM, of course, right as we killed Mograine. I got his hammer. It was the dream come true. Level 40, of course, meant so many things. Training, getting my pony, collecting updated PvP gear. I wanted to get started immediately on my professions. Nerd. I was heading back to town to do all my happy errands when Discord pinged. Raven has joined the channel. Sup, dude? Oh, hi, Raven. Can you help me for a minute, mate? I need to, like, move some gold, yeah, from my bank hole. I don't want to, like, wait for the mail to arrive. You know what I mean, mate? I want to do it, like, right now. Uh, sure. I mean, Ironforge. Nah, mate. Stormwind, didn't it, mate? Don't go to Ironforge. Full of fucking dwarfs and shit. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, I'm going to go to Stormwind to train spells, so I can do that anyway. It's not a big ask, really. No worries, I said. I'll meet you at the bank. So, I hearthed to Ironforge, flew to Stormwind. Raven then broke into, yeah, mate, did you see Facebook today, though? 
I'm so sorry for what you're about to hear, but it is what's written. Yeah, mate, did you see, like, Facebook today? There was, like, when I logged in, yeah, there was this fucking video, mate, of Taylor Swift's bum. And when the wind blew up her dress at a concert... Do you think it's, like, something I should share in the Guild Discord? Because, like, you could see a bum. And which channel do you think is appropriate for that? <laughs> which channel is the appropriate channel for a video of Taylor Swift's bum? <laughs> I directed him politely to the channel we've called Sweet Memes, <laughs> which we set up for Raven's posts almost entirely. What he doesn't know... Is that only Raven and the officers can see that channel? <laughs> <laughs> they created a channel just for him to post his shit in. <laughs> and then nobody has to be bothered with it. Oh my fucking god. Oh, that is insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put it in that channel. That channel is everybody knows about it. The whole guild knows this channel exists. Literally only him and the officers can see it. That is fucking maniacally evil. I arrived at Stormwind Bank. The steps were bustling, but I spotted Raven's bank alt immediately. A naked human female mange named King Sunak Forever. That's not after Rishi. I don't like it. I don't like it. I opened trade and Raven gave me his gold transfer. A handsome sum of 3 gold, 14 silver. <laughs> Big money. <laughs> Big money coming in. Big money. It's enough to buy Rend, which I haven't. <laughs> me, how did you know that was my bank hole, though? Uh, I think I've seen it before. Uh, why don't you swap to your main? I will in a minute when you get there, mate. I just want to do some stuff here while I'm on my own. You know what I mean? Get where? I asked, dreading the answer. Oh, I've logged out in Darnassus, mate. That's where I need the gold to buy my things. Uh. Uh. I was typing when the GM of the guild, who was also in our Discord channel but hadn't spoke for an hour, went, LOL. <laughs> He then whispered me, serves you right for replying to him. <laughs> that motherfucking G, I'm sorry, leave the, joined the channel and just went. Ah. <laughs> Rookie. <laughs> Raven, I'm not going to Darnassus. It's so far away. I've just used my Hearthstone to come here and help you. And I've got stuff to do here. Mate, you is level 40 though. And the GM, right, as a rule in this guild, officers are there to help. Raven, just mail it. I opened trade with the alt and put the gold in the slot. But he did not accept the trade. Oh, no. Please, mate. Do us a favor, yeah? I need it now. In the officer chat, I just typed question mark, question mark, question mark. Our GM replied, Roffle. Up to you, bro. <laughs> Fine, I said to Raven, closing the trade window and running to catch the bird back to Menethil Harbour. Nice one, mate. You is the best. The griffin flapped, slow as it does in classic, up the continent. And when I arrived at the harbour, I, of course, missed the boat to Teldrassil by inches. Fuck my life. All the while, Raven was still in Stormwind on his bank hall. Searching for leather greens and asking whether I thought they would be good for a rogue. Should I get this one? What do you think of these stats? Mate, do you know which enchants are good for rogues in Season of Discovery Season 2? Mate, where do you even buy enchants on the auction house in Classic? I can't even find them. <sighs> Finally, I arrived in Darnassus. Okay, I'm here. Nice one, mate. I'll relog. Sure enough, Raven logged in and then he laughed. What? I asked. <laughs> Mate, you're not even going to believe it, though. My fucking, my fucking mains in Stormwind, though, innit? Ah, uh, could have swore I logged out in Darnassus, but I'm in Stormwind. <clears throat> Are you trying to be funny? I literally just flew all the way here. It's all right, mate. It's all right. I got time. I'll just wait here because you got to come back anyway, aren't you, to do your stuff? I 
I didn't key up for obvious reasons. Our GM did, though. <clears throat> was the only sound I heard. In case that didn't come through on the microphone, the GM's response to this was... <clears throat> I was about to freak the fuck out. But I knew deep down, there's no winning with Raven. He doesn't even see what he's done as being annoying. There's no chance that I can, like, teach him or educate him. Because we've tried. We've tried for years and it's pointless. The time boss has applied 43 stacks of old on me now. And one benefit of my seasoned years is knowing not to bother with him. I was going back to Stormwind anyway. It's fine. Okay, I'm on my way. My Hearthstone was, of course, on cooldown. I ran back to the flight path, caught the birds of Aberdeen, missed the boat to Menethil as I was running over. On the docks and the boat and the griffin, I listened to Raven. He had read a really interesting article on Facebook about Star Wars being Star Wars being woke now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you know what I saw on Facebook, mate? Star Wars is woke as fuck, mate. Did you count how many men's and how many women's were in Star Wars recently, mate? And that lady had blue hair. What do you think of that? As no one responded to this, he then started talking about how Classic was far superior to retail because Death Knights ruined World of Warcraft. <laughs> and that he could no longer play Wrath Classic because they were infesting there too. He then told me how he needed to get Ruins of Lauder on neutered but he couldn't find any vets. Yeah, vets are hard to come by. There aren't many. <laughs> Do you know any vets in Adelaide? He asked me out of the blue. To be clear with everybody listening to this, I don't live anywhere near Adelaide. He does. But he was still asking me. <laughs> no, Raven. No, I don't know any vets in Adelaide. <laughs> When I arrived in Stormwind, I invited Raven to a group, eager to get this over and done with as quickly as possible. He accepted, and then I looked at the map, and I swear to you all that I am not making this up. My mouth nearly hit the desk. Raven, why are you in Ratchet? You were taking ages, and I needed to do a quest, so I thought I'd nip here quick and come back. The GM had stopped keying up now and just whispered me lol 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 in all caps. Like, GM, fuck you, man. <laughs> fuck you, man. <clears throat> fuck you, dude. Dude, I just, I just came to Stormwind to give you your money, dude. Like, I've literally been traveling for the last 30 minutes to give you this money. All right, I didn't know you was in a rush. It might be quicker if you come here because I'm sorting things out here before I can head back. No, 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 I'm not coming to Ratchet. No. I will mail you the money. I need it, mate. I need it. Why do you think we've been doing all this? It's because I need the money now. Dude, I've flown all over Azeroth for... I'm busy. Just come here. I can't come to you, mate. I can't. Why? Because, right? <laughs> I used the last of my money to pay for the Griffin flight here. I can't fly back to Stormwind at the moment. I haven't got the gold until you give it to me. I'll be honest with you guys. I should have just mailed it and said I've had enough. But the whole situation that he got himself in was so tragic that I relented. It was just so sad and pathetic. I took a deep breath and I said, sure, but please do not leave Ratchet. All right, mate. I got on the bird to Booty Bay. I missed the boat to Ratchet as I ran over, of course. I could see Raven chatting away while I traveled, but I didn't hear a word of it because I'd put him on mute on Discord. <laughs> when I arrived, there, stood in front of me, like the model of Zeus himself was Raven. Standing on top of the giant anchor in the middle of the town. I ran up, I opened trade, I put in the very, very needed and required three gold and 14 silver. And then I clicked accept. And then 
Nothing. Nothing. I waited and I waited. I relented and unmuted him. Raven. Yeah, mate. Accept the trade, dude. Oh, mate, you got there really fast. I'm just walking Brian Forge. I'll be back in a minute, mate. I'm just listening to Discord on my phone. The GM whispered me and just said, Rookie. I gave up. I'll be honest. I gave up. I'm mailing you the gold, I said, and then I just left the channel and left the group. Now, Season of Discovery... Is this not the end? Oh my god. <laughs> That's not even the end. Now, Season of Discovery 2 has a new PvP event in Stranglethorn Vale. Every three hours, the ancient lowers demand a blood sacrifice. The sky turns red and everyone in the zone is flagged free-for-all PvP for 30 minutes. Alliance can kill Alliance, Horde can kill Horde, every kill grants a blood buff which can be swapped for coins at the shrines around the zones. Groups are allowed and won't be hostile to other group members, but raids are banned. Joining a raid applies a 5% debuff to movement speed and health for every person in the raid. And honestly, it's really good fun. I've yet to do it. I'm looking forward to it. When I arrived in Booty Bay, the 9 o'clock session had just begun. On my PVE server, there's an unspoken rule that if you don't grief pe that you don't grief people in the city. But I was a level 40 rep paladin with a might of menethil hammer in a world of players several levels below me. And I was pissed right off. I went door to door in Booty Bay, murdering every person I found. Nobody escaped. I felt like Arthas in Strathome. People who were AFK in the tavern, dead. Bank alts at Booty Bay, dead. Clothies arriving on the Griffin Master, dead. My usual STV crew invited me and ran down from the Gurubashi Arena. And when they arrived in town, they found me slaughtering lobies waiting on the docks to escape STV by boat. Three level 25s begged for mercy as the boat arrived. I wiped them out in a single divine storm. As their blood gushed over my character, they asked, Are you okay? This way, I said, and led them to the graveyard outside of town. We camped the respawns until they stopped bothering to pop. Then we went north to the camp to the blood turning points. My group was into it at first, but then the whispers from our victims arrived. I got called a wanker and a neckbeard so many times I stopped counting. A dozen people claimed to have reported me to Blizzard. It bled into general chat. Memorably, someone said, don't go to Booty Bay unless you want to meet Turbo Dumbass and his chicken shit friends. Then the GM piped up in a different manner. Why am I getting messages about guildies griefing? I didn't reply. By the time event ended, the red mist had cleared and I felt much better. But the damage was done. I had single-handedly got our guild name known as a griefer guild. All five of us in my STV group are on the server blacklist and can't get into any of the decent pugs anymore. <laughs> One of them even re-rolled his character to get rid of the stigma attached to his character's name. Oh, you motherfucker. My GM wants to kick me and says if I don't write an apology on the server Discord, he's removing me. Justice Preach. You want us to judge you for this? I got mad. I broke the ever-precious social contract. I admit it. In my defense, I have explained Raven to you. <laughs> Do you think I was wrong? <sighs> yes. Yeah, you can't take out your frustrations on other people. It's not their fault. You are, Of course you're guilty. Of course you're guilty. You were guilty the second you did it. Of course you're guilty. And your friends are guilty for joining in as well. Of course you're guilty. Of course. You can't just destroy everybody else's fun because of this fucking guy that you won't deal with in any way. Of course you're guilty. You knew you were guilty the moment you stepped in. You knew it. You absolutely knew it. A hundred percent. Absolutely disgusting. Guilty as fuck. Super guilty and absolutely deserving of it. Uh, can you give me his real name so I can blacklist him? No. <laughs> no, we can't. All right, let's, uh, f well, I think we just had one of these. I actually think your GM is guilty as well. So let him know that. If you if you want me to render judgment, your your GM 
for not removing Raven from the guild is also a fucking guilty motherfucker. So I don't think he could judge you because he is also guilty. 100%. All right. Name of and Titan's Anvil. We need a guild name, my friends. We need a guild name for our story number two of today. Uh, but this one will be from a Canadian. My God. We need a Canadian guild name. That isn't the Moose Knuckles, all right? Let's go up with something better than the Moose Knuckles. <coughs> Canadian. Brian Forge. <laughs> <laughs> the angry beavers the maple syrups <laughs> oh i like the snow blowers let's go with that let's go with the snow blowers uh, it's better than the maple syrups oh maple bacon all right we'll be maple bacon i like that better we'll be maple bacon that sounds pretty good the brian knuckles no that's not what we got hello preacher and bex i'm a long ass time drama time watcher a first time writer hailing from the great northern lands where people play hockey, they ride their moose, they drink their maple syrup fresh from the trees, and are too polite. That's right, I hail from the great land of Canada. Everyone in this story is guilty as fuck besides one nice person. And I want to apologize to them. Oh no, are we bullying? Are we bullying? Oh no. Please no bully. Please, no bully. Ladies and gentlemen, let me set the stage for you. I am 18 years of age in the year 2015. I was at a friend's house with my girlfriend, Damavand. My friend was showing off the critically acclaimed MMORPG Final Fantasy XIV. I watched him do the first three trials of A Realm Reborn and was hooked. Damavand and I dove in. We researched every detail we could about the game and how to start. I remember looking up the most current raid at the time, watching the Bahamut fight, and was blown away by the number of mechanics you had to learn for one boss. Apparently, this wasn't even the hardest fight of the raid. As someone who loves challenging raid content, I was so excited for coils. <laughs> Loser. As soon as I logged in, I made an oath that I would stand and defeat the Bahamut. David Van and I made characters, a classic tank healer combo. I was to be a gladiator wide walker and she to be a conjurer. I messaged my friends to let him know that we were on the server and for him to respond with, I've stopped playing that dumbass weeb game. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> that was fast. <laughs> that was pretty quick, actually. <laughs> No matter, I thought. <clears throat> no matter. We duo leveled all the way up to 50, enjoying the story, dungeons, and community of the game. Combat was kind of lame, but that's okay. Once we finally hit level 50, I was ready to enter the coils of Bahamut himself. But there was one minor issue. Somehow, after all my research, I didn't realize that Dave Van and I had started in the Heaven's Ward pre-patch. And by the time we had gotten to level 50... The expansion was released. Instead of this epic fight of taking down Bahamut, we got to do the level 50 post-patch quests. Holy shit, this was the worst gaming experience of my life. The amount of fetch quests is just fucking unreal. Close brackets. <clears throat> level to 60 and fight big dumb robots instead. Did you just shit on Alexander? Bruh. Did you just shit on Alexander? I don't know about that. Uh, I don't know about that, mate. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I don't think... Yeah, I don't think you have any uh, right to be shitting on Alexander. You better watch your fucking mouth. <laughs> Seriously, Mike. Heaven's Ward. All about dragons. And the raid bosses are stupid fucking Transformers. You are... You are in fucking trouble, kid. They had the most stupid raid boss names I'd ever seen. The fist, the arm, the cuff, the ball sack of the stupid ass father. It was called the Dragon Song War and had no fucking dragon bosses. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. The story blew me away. But Alexander was an ultimate letdown. Especially because I have a fixation for dragon boss fights and I really wanted coils. You can go and do coils. It's fine. Anyways... 
this isn't why I'm writing to you. I just wanted to express my disappointment of Alexander. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The drama started with one dangerous phrase uttered by me to Damavand. We should join a casual guild. I spoke these words like a sermon on the mount after hitting max level. Damavand and I had grown bored of playing with just each other and wanted to make new friends in the wonderful world of Eorzea. Maybe do some easy raid content or fun activities, that sort of thing. This was Damavand's first MMO, and I was a very mediocre, let's say, WoW player at the time. To us, a casual approach to raiding seemed like a good idea. Now, Mike, yes, I am older and wiser now. I have listened to Drama Time. I know how fucking stupid this decision was. <laughs> we didn't know how to find a guild or free company in FF. So we went to their equivalent of trade chat. We went and running around Limsa looking for guild invites. Regardless... We found an FC that would invite us, no questions asked. They're the best ones. They're the best ones. Any guild that'll invite you with, like, absolutely no questions is easily the best choice. You want to go in that one. Yeah, yeah. If people put requirements to join their guild, they're probably elitists, is what I find. And you're going to have a really bad time, right? So join the one that'll just send you an invite, irrespective of anything about you whatsoever. Those are the best ones. <clears throat> the Maple Bacon. Maple bacon seemed perfect. <laughs> they welcomed us into their dungeon runs, offered us crafted gear. They planned fun guild events at their house. And for the first couple of months, I was so happy. Damon Van and I would hop onto their Discord every day after school and just shoot the shit with its members. Maple Bacon showed Damavand and I the most addicting content I'd ever done in FF14. The Time Worn Dragonskin map. These mini raids, or whatever you call them, were the shit. The feeling you get when the game is teasing you on whether or not the door you chose would let you further on. Right gang, left gang, baby. Right gang, left gang. <laughs> we, we had a fun day doing that, man. <laughs> we had a fun day doing that. Would you go further? Would you get locked out? It was always hilarious. Some of my favorite memories are just doing maps. Always a great way to make money at the time. As time went on, though, Dame of And and I got closer and closer to the leadership of Maple Bacon. In particular, the guild master Titan Zanville, as well as Kalia and Alahard, who were officers of Maple Bacon. One day, however... I had just finished a dungeon with some of Maple Bacon's leadership and took a break to stretch my legs, get a snack, the usual that you do after a donga. But when I get back to my PC, which was in the same room as Damavan's, she had a huge smile on her face and is staring at me. W what is it? Guess what? We're going to meet the leadership in real life they're coming in from all over the world from texas british columbia even the netherlands uh when did you decide this just now when you weren't here you made this decision in 10 minutes while i was in the kitchen mike i felt a bit upset that i was not even like asked about this <laughs> in any way that this, we were like, we're going to travel somewhere. I felt a bit upset about it. Meeting people online in real life is weird to me. As David Van and I would be playing host to them because they were apparently going to stay with us. Oh. Oh. Yeah, the, no. <laughs> no. Neutral ground, baby. Neutral ground. Neutral ground. Neutral ground. We go to neutral ground. <sighs> It was one of our first ever arguments after I voiced my frustration. Ultimately, I relented. Of course she did. <laughs> she taught you into it. Motherfucker. It's a bad idea. Every alarm bell in my head is ringing. This is a terrible idea. 
Oh, go on. Go on. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. <sighs> Honestly, I was curious about meeting my online friends. I'd made it a maple bacon, but it was a bit too soon in my mind as Damavan had only known Titans Anvil, Alverd, and Kalir for four months, really. Now, I forget how it happened. So, I apologize. What I'm telling you might be a little confusing. We'll do our best. But for some reason, Dame of and I planned a different trip right before the meetup was happening. And Titan's Anvil, who was GM of Maple Bacon and from the Netherlands, wanted to spend more time in my hometown of Toronto. He had planned to come a week early and stay for two weeks instead of the three days that the other members were coming for. He didn't have any money to... S no, no, no. He didn't have any money to stay at a hotel the whole time. So he asks if he can crash at ours. More specifically, at Damavan's mother's house for the first week, as Damavan still lived there, and he could afford to stay at an Airbnb for the second week. Damavan said sure without hesitation. So that was happening. Okay, so she's not there. He's not trying to stay with her. They're going away. For a week while I was on a different trip with Damavan, Titan's Anvil was staying with Damavan's mother exploring the city. That's so weird. Why would you invite a stranger to stay with your mother while you're not there? That's so weird. That's not right at all. That's really fucking weird. My mum would tell me to get fucked. She'd be like, you want who to stay here? And I'd be like, uh, Raven. He's all right. Just don't talk to him. Where are you going to be? Somewhere else. So you want this guy to come over and live in my house <laughs> while well, you're not here <sighs> okay other than getting a random photo op of titan's anvil going around the spots in toronto we recommended we didn't hear much of anything while we were away so let's go forward a week dame of and i arrive back from the trip we finally meet titan's anvil five days before wait you didn't even meet him first wait wait are you fucking telling me this guy turned up while you were already away you didn't even do introductions. You didn't give him an ocular pat down to see if he was fucking okay or not some maniac that had shown up. We finally meet Titan's Anvil five days before the official meetup at Damavan's house. After we exchanged the normal, wow, it's so crazy, we've been talking online together, and now we're finally meeting, blah, 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 conversations. Titan's Anvil... We asked Titan's Anvil how it's been going. He says, let's talk upstairs. <clears throat> he then quietly tells us that Dame of and your mum has been really kind of a bitch to me. I don't know how you stay with her. I mean... I imagine she was a little off-put at a stranger staying in her house. <laughs> because it's fucking weird. <clears throat> I'm sure she was fucking, like, locking a door at night. I know my mum would be. She'd be sleeping with a fucking shotgun. We were both shocked, as you could probably imagine. And I don't know how the fuck people like this exist, but they do. Yes, Dame of Anne's mother can be a stern woman who may not make a great first impression. But to say that the woman who let you stay in her house for free after not meeting you is a bitch floored me. I should have immediately, of course, told the guy to get fucked and get out of the house, but it wasn't my house. And Dave Van just said, if we're going to be friends, I don't want to ever hear you say that again. <laughs> okay, you, 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 I don't want to presume, but your girlfriend seems like a bit of a pushover. <laughs> I may need a little bit of... Stiffening up a little bit. <laughs> a little bit of stiffening up a little bit. I would like to have temporarily, if I could go back in time, replace your girlfriend with Emma during this conversation. And then let's see how this plays out. Because it's very different. Let's just say that. It's very different. 
<laughs> Mike, <clears throat> I cannot describe to you how much I came to fucking hate this guy. All the dungeons I read him. Nights I stayed up talking with him. I don't know. I truly understood that I didn't know this person. I knew I, I've gamed with him for tens and tens of hours, but I did not know who this guy was. It really set the tone what was to come for the remaining week. The saving grace was that Titan's Anvil was, of course, moving to an Airbnb somewhere else for the rest of the trip. So at least we would get some peace and distance from him and could limit our time spent. After somehow getting past that conversation where Titan's Anvil had called Damavan's mother a bitch, <clears throat> Damavan asked Titan's Anvil what he thought of Toronto. And he had the most annoying responses. Don't get me wrong, I'm not exactly in love with Toronto, but what he had to say was some weird dick measuring contest with the Netherlands. <laughs> Fuck off. Well, Toronto's windmills are much smaller than our windmills. And you have many mountains, and our mountains are very flat, and it is much better, and our tulips are superior. <laughs> I have some friends who do this in some minor way, but this guy was next level. I hated everything he fucking said. I'll give you an example of what he said. Yeah, the food in Toronto is good, but in the Netherlands, we have all the chefs of the world coming together to make food that will blow up your Canadian taste buds. Your food is fine, but it's so much better in the Netherlands. He also said, Canada has some nice trees, <coughs> but the Netherlands trees are greener and taller and seem more special than your Canadian trees. Owned. <laughs> Get wrecked. <laughs> Get schooled. <coughs> he then told us that the roller coaster was fun, but it is nothing compared to the roller coaster at Efteling. For the rest of the day, we just played video games, talked about FF, went out to dinner, things uh, were going a bit smoother. And after dinner, Damon Van and I escorted Titan's Anvil back to his Airbnb. That's when Titan's Anvil gave us the address of his Airbnb, which made Damon Van and I immediately pause. I'm pretty sure Titan's Anvil just picked the cheapest possible place he could possibly stay, but the address he'd named was when in one of the absolute dirtiest, filthiest parts of Toronto that possibly exist. I also started to understand how little planning went into his trip, like Titan's Anvil being on his own for a week before Damon Van were even there, which we actually didn't find out until after we had agreed to let him stay. I stayed out of most of the planning as Damon Van was usually in control of all these kind of things. And as we walked there and saw the place, I couldn't imagine a filthier dirt box to live in. He was staying in a complex that looked like a shitty motel where hookers and drug dealers dwell 24-7. There was trash everywhere, there was yelling, smashing sounds, it was like a movie scene. I was in a bit of a dilemma. Normally I just said, dude, you're not staying here, come and stay with us. But this guy was a bit of a dick. <laughs> and I felt this was kind of like karma, actually. <laughs> I'm definitely guilty. At the time, Titan's Anvil seemed cocky, rude and annoying, but looking back, we were 19 years old. Leaving this kid who's in another country to stay alone in that hellhole was too far, I think. Anyway, Damavand and I asked if he was going to be okay. Me hoping he'd say yes. He responded with a nervous, yeah. So we took it at face value and immediately ditched him and went home. <laughs> cool, bye. I'm sure Damavand was also pretty frustrated from that day because it wasn't normal for either of us to just leave someone uh, like that in the ditch. As we transit back to Damon Vance to go to bed at the end of the night, we started getting texts from Titan's Anvil telling us he actually is not okay and that he didn't want to stay there and could he come back and stay at our mother's house. We took a deep breath, considered where we had left him, and agreed that he could stay in the basement for the remainder of his trip. After even everything he had said, it was the right thing to do. We didn't want to stay there, and we would have hoped somebody would have got us out of it. I then stayed at Dame of Ants 2, because I didn't trust this guy at all. Smart. The rest of the guild was just meeting for the weekend, so Dame of Ant and I had to babysit Titan's Anvil for every hour until the guild meeting happened. As we spent more and more time with him, I started to learn more about him. Starting with his morning rituals. Oh, no. <clears throat> He would always get up and immediately start gelling his hair while he was in bed using his phone as a mirror. He then had a routine of putting on cologne before having a shower. 
as he felt it washed in the smell for the whole day. I think I just went... I think I just had a stroke. <laughs> I don't even know how to process that information. I really don't. I don't even know how to input that. I'm getting, like, errors coming out the side of my brain. After his shower, he would then use the main mirror to do his final, what he called, styling. <laughs> and said that this routine had netted him more girls in the Netherlands than you could possibly imagine. And that his current girlfriend had actually sought him out at a party and telling him he was the hottest one there. So he had done this morning routine ever since. <laughs> Titan's Avil might have been a bit vain, nothing wrong with a bit of self-care routine and having confidence, but pretty sure he was full of shit. <laughs> okay, dude. <laughs> he was also very physical. Throughout our time together, he'd randomly slap and then laugh and shove me around. I think he was trying to add playful physicality to our dynamic, but I wasn't digging it. We took him to theme parks, restaurants, movie theaters, the CN Tower. It's the tower is so overrated, Mike, you have no idea. <laughs> fuck that stupid tourist trap and every time he went somewhere he would of course mention how the netherlands had not only done this first but done it better he one day made us watch some netflix movie about his old dutch admiral who took no shit called the admiral the movie was interesting but i wasn't going to tell him that it truly felt like he was on a secret mission to recruit us to the netherlands in other case it wasn't going to happen i was just counting the days until the rest of the fc came <coughs> When we finally met the rest of the FC, I actually had a decent time with them besides Titan Zanville. Kalir was nice, Alahad too. I started to finally understand what made these relationships so special. It felt that anything I wanted to talk about, Kalir and Alahad were super into. We would laugh about all the in-game experiences we had together and talk about how far we had come as a guild. And we took the FC members to a local esports bar that Dame of and I loved. I like to preface that what happened here with a stark warning, drink responsibly. Okay. We had, we had anyone who was keen on drinking a lot do the Atomic Cherry Bomb. Sidetracking from the story a little bit, the bartender at the esports bar would make a drink called the Atomic Cherry Bomb. I can't find a video online because it's illegal to make it a bar, I assume, so I built a diagram for you. The large box... Jesus Christ. So the glass... Uh, <laughs> the glass uh, is a large drinking pitcher. 20% is filled with Guinness... The top is filled with, uh, the top has two more glasses in it that are being held up by each other. One glass is filled with Irish whiskey and Baileys. The second glass is filled with Red Bull and has two shot glasses on top of that jammed on top. The left shot glass in the right cup has Jägermeister in it while the other has a shot of Jameson. The order in which you drink this stupid thing is to pull out the Jameson on top, drink that first. That causes the shot of Jaeger to go into the Red Bull to create the Jaeger bomb. You grab that and drink that, pull out the pitcher and drink the other two, and then you have the Irish whiskey and the Baileys with the Guinness creating an Irish bomb, and you can down the complete drink in one go. It's safe to say we got pretty fucked up that night. <laughs> yeah. That's gross. That's disgusting. They had N64s all over the place. We played Smash, Mario Kart, Goldeneye, and the OG Smash Bros. where I played Kirby and cheese the fuck out of the game. Uh, and but it was a great, great night. The rest of the days went by with more of the same until where Damavand and I opened up to Kalir about Titans. Why did you say anything? <sighs> when he was out of the room. Kalir didn't give a shit about anything. After hearing what Titan's Anvil was like, he immediately suggested, let's just fucking ditch that douche and make our own guild. So we came up with a plan in person while he was in the next room. As soon as he got back on the plane to the Netherlands, Damavand and I did a leave the FC any percent speed run and made our own. Kale left as soon as he got home from Texas, trying to cleanse ourselves of all that we had witnessed of this guy. Once Titan's Anvil noticed we had left and Alahad would start talk stalking us in game, Dancing in underwear, saying in chat, Dame of Anaya, bad friends that abandoned our, our glorious guild master, and that we were Netherland phobic. We tried to explain to Alhard what had happened, but he didn't believe it because of how quickly we had left. He was sticking to Titan's Anvil because he really liked him when they met. Then out of the blue, Alhard starts messaging Dame of Ant that he loves her. <laughs> and now that she's left, 
being manipulated by me, it might be time for him and her to get together. What a gangster. Alahad still thinks there's a chance. She immediately showed me the messages and I DM'd him, you fucking dirtbag. Alahad responded back. Mate, even if there's a goalie, you can still score. Ew. That's disgusting. After that, we had enough. I actually liked Alhard in person and can't believe that he would turn to shit like this. Maybe he was trolling because Titans have asked him to, but we had to block them and move on with our lives. After this, though, that Final Fantasy XIV community feeling of happiness and joy had gone, and we gave the game a miss and moved back to World of Warcraft for a bit. I've heard good things from you about Final Fantasy XIV, so maybe I will give that a try, but it has been many years since I played. This all happened eight to nine years ago, so I tried to get all the details, but I'm sure I missed something. I'm curious to hear what you think. If you ever come to Toronto, I'd love to meet you and buy you a beer. Absolutely. I look forward to every Friday because of you, and you've helped me get through many a tough day. So thank you to you and the wonderful audience for always putting smiles on our face on a Friday. Be good and be happy. Hey! There are some weirdos out there, and you need to be very frigging careful with them. That's what you need to do. You need to be very frigging careful with those dudes, because weirdness, my friends, weirdness is just a state.